Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 8 of the Mumkey and Cobb movie podcast show. I am, of course, your NPR radio host, Mumkey Jones, and today I am joined by... Somebody, please, get this man a gun. Uh, e. Rich. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> is that your Lawrence Fishburne That's impression? That's my best Lawrence Fishburne. That's my best Morpheus. <laughs> I almost missed that scene of the movie because I had to pee very, very bad. But I oh, just damn. I, I held that bladder and I didn't want to leave the theater. Yeah, good. Hey, everybody. Today we're talking about John Wick 2. I just got back from seeing it. E. Rich saw it a couple days ago. Yep. And it's true. It is probably one of the weakest sequels ever made. Um Probably going to be one of the worst movies of the year. I can see a lot of Razzies coming for this one. Just Especially compared to the first Keanu. one, it's embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yeah. I would yeah, have rather yeah. seen that the movie Keanu starring George and uh, Key and Peele again rather than see this one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His role in that is much more believable. <laughs> e. Rich, what did you think of John Wick Chapter 2? Oh my god, Mom Key, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is just everything I wanted from a John Wick sequel. Like so I went into and John more. Wick. Oh, and more, absolutely, absolutely. I didn't even know what I wanted and it provided it to me. Yes. Yes. So I went into John Wick, like what, two and a half years ago or whatever. Kind of like not really expecting much. I knew it was a good action movie. And I, I like good action movies. I don't like just general action movies. They tend to be kind of shitty and the action isn't done well. What I like in action movies is very uh, sustained, long shots where you can see that there's actual action taking place. And they're not just cutting around everything because the actors or stuntmen or whatever just aren't very good or they don't want to do things continuously. These John Wick movies give me every kind of action that I've ever wanted. And like this movie, I, the, the first John Wick movie was mainly the gunplay parts. But this movie gets off to a fucking great start with a great car chase uh, and some hand-to-hand -hand combat, which I did not expect to kind of see, uh, having first come up with the John Wick movie where he's just basically tactical gun shooter. But yeah, this movie delivered so much of what I wanted to see from a good, solid action movie. On that same note, I think the reason why the John Wick movies stand out so much and they're, they're so critically praised is because action movies are just really lazy. Yeah, and absolutely. When I think of a gun shootout in an action movie, it's usually one guy hiding behind a car, not moving, just firing his gun, and it goes on for like three minutes. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, I feel like every single thing in this movie is so highly choreographed yep. that it's it's not just a gunfight, it's like a dance. And he's doing all these... Yeah. It's, it's like you mix shooting a guy with with karate or taekwondo or some shit because mm -hmm. he's doing it's, it's a full body movement motion he's moving all around the place doing all these crazy stunts to to get his guys yeah whereas like i said other movies in the same genre are just fucking so lazily made mm -hmm. and so boring and i think we got to give credit to the the directors who are former stuntmen and who are oh, actually shit. like the stunt coordinators on the matrix movies and so they know Keanu Reeves. They can work with Keanu Reeves from the Matrix movies. And so they directed uh, the, the first one. There were two guys. And then for this one, just the one guy directed it. But those guys know how to shoot action. They know how to do the stunts. Like everything there, I just credit for them. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are different stunt guys on these movies that really choreograph it and make sure that everybody knows everything well. But like the directors know how to shoot the action and really show you everything. And know like kind of how to showcase it correctly. So one of my favorite things about John Wick is how he he doesn't just get headshots all the time. He gets the headshot. He gets taint shots. He gets dick shots. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like <laughs> he always goes for two shots on somebody. Like if he shoots him in the shoulder or in the chest or something, he's going to go for that headshot eventually. But like just that, he's just he's just so like clockwork precision he makes sure that those people go down and they stay down and i fucking love that about this movie and it, the takes movies. are so long that keanu reeves is actually performing these stunts yeah like he's actually getting that that precision with a gun and all that it's not a hundred different cuts to show liam neeson jumping over a fence mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. all in the camera which as you were saying like it, it's amazing to see it all happen without the shaky cam all over the or place CGI, trying to hide yeah yeah Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's like blood CGI in this all over the place, but uh, I don't even care. 
Yeah, they might CGI in muzzle flashes or something, so it looks like like the gun's being fired or like legit being fired a lot. Um, so my question for you, Monkey, is okay. What what are your thoughts on Keanu Reeves? I don't really know him. I ha- actually mm-hmm. haven't seen The Matrix. I I saw Speed when I was like eight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw uh, Bill and Ted, and I thought it was okay. Yep. But I don't really have a whole lot of experience with Keanu Reeves. But from these John Wick movies, I, I like him in these. Although, I don't know if it's just part of the character or maybe it's part of his acting. But mm-hmm. it seems like every time John Wick speaks, he's in physical pain to get the words out. Yeah, I know he's yeah. a man of very few words, but there it, it seemed like he was having trouble speaking. <laughs> there are times in this movie where he's speaking Italian and it feels like he's like giving birth or something while he's speaking. <laughs> Cafe. <laughs> like he, he just really has to force the words out. OK, but so Keanu Reeves, I've never really been much of a fan of him. I saw him in The Matrix and I saw him in like Bill and Ted's. Like those are two different kinds of Keanu Reeves. Like he's mm-hmm. kind of in one edge of his career. He's like the dopey uh hippie guy who's yeah kind of often often space but then there's the action keanu reeves and so his all his matrix stuff is decent but like i always think he's he's a little bit wooden like and uh, i can think of no better time uh than in the bram stoker's dracula movie where he is asked to have an english accent and it's just he is awful in that movie Mm. so coming from those kinds of performances and going into a john wick type movie I'm not really expecting much. He just embodies this role so well. I mean, it's not like he's like doing entire monologues and like just having to talk a whole lot. It, it, I don't it, think he has a sentence that's more than seven words. Yeah, yeah. It really revolves around his action chops, and he definitely has those. But I think he does bring enough gravitas to the role where, I mean, like in the first movie, they killed his dog, and uh, the dog was special to uh, him from his dead wife. But I, I think he, he, he just sells it enough that it needs to be sold. And he can do a lot of the goofy action that is in these movies that I just love. Like, whenever th- anything's over the top, but realistic in a cool way, like, I just go for that. I love it. There, is, there are scenes in the middle of this movie that I was just like, this is fucking great. I think it's good that he doesn't talk uh, so much. It kind of reminds me of Carl Urban playing Judge Dredd. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where he has almost no dialogue in the movie, but he's mm-hmm. just like the great action guy. And oh, I, I like that of Keanu being the, just like the silent but deadly. He's like a fart. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a fart. Like a really Everybody's nasty... terrified of him, and he's like a man of few words. He's very soft-spoken. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't speak very often. Okay. Uh, so... And I, I like that about him as a character, I guess. Mm-hmm. Can we get into some of the kills in this movie? Yeah, we should, because when you were talking <laughs> about the action, I wanted to say not only do we have the match made in heaven of those stunt choreographer guys directing mm-hmm. the movie with Keanu, but also you tie that in and it's it's enhanced by the creative fun kills in the movie yes, as well as definitely. some of the humor that they mix in along with the brutal murder. Yeah. Yeah, so this movie starts with a car chase through New York City uh, so I first think of it, all, way too loud. Oh, really? Was your theater too loud? This car chase was just my ears were bleeding. I like that the okay. guns were really, really loud, but this car chase mm. in particular, I I almost couldn't stand it. My my movie theater must have a shit sound system that I went to because it, it was kind of like a it was dulled seeming. Like mm. it, it was loud at times, but it was kind of just generally dulled. I might need to go to a different theater and see this again. Maybe somebody complained because mine was very loud the whole time. Okay, but so the movie starts with a car chase, and I guess it it picks up shortly after the first movie because he's going after his car. Right. It was like a bookend of the first movie. Yeah, yeah. One of the big This could have been at the end of the first movie for all we know. Absolutely, yeah. One of the big parts of the first movie is that uh, they killed his dog and then they stole his super cool what is it a mustang i I don't know cars so i'm gonna i don't know cars either mustang or corvette or something and so they steal his really nice old car and so he gets this car back in the beginning of this movie but he just fucking kills people with this car like (laughs) he uses this car as a weapon he is running into people he's tracking people down and and like he eventually gets out of his car and then he's getting hit by cars left and right yeah that's one of the running gags in the movie is that John Wick keeps getting hit by cars. That happens yeah. probably three times. Yeah, it's one of all... it's one of two gags in the movie <laughs> that keep coming up that I really love. 
Yeah, yeah. And all the while he's doing this, we've got like this, I don't know, shoehorned in uh, relative of the bad guy in the last movie, played by Peter Stormare <laughs> as a Russian guy. And mm. he's just doing the same kind of shtick that they did in the last movie, where it's basically like, John fucking Wick, the boogeyman, like just <laughs> building up the legend. One of my favorite parts is him sitting in his like little... Uh, room or whatever and outside you can hear John Wick going about his business and he just knows he is fucking screwed he just hears his men screaming in pain Mm -hmm. and so let's let's mention one of the particularly good kills a fucking pencil yeah yeah (laughs) we get fucking amazing it was rumored in the first movie right they didn't they tell a story Mm -hmm. but now we get to see it for real (laughs) and it it lived up to the hype so there was, what, an ear kill that he stabs it in somebody's ear and into his brain and probably... What what else was there he did, he did with the pencil? He just fucking stabbed it through these guys' heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you should know by this point in listening to this review if you would like this movie, if a good time to you is watching Keanu Reeves stab random henchmen in the face and head with a pencil, <laughs> you will love this movie. You Plain will. and simple. If that's the type of movie you like, I don't know why you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, a, a audience... pencil stabbing only comes once in a generation, so you need to go out to your theater and buy a fucking ticket. Yeah, we had it in 2008 in The Dark Knight, and now we've got it that's in right, 2017. That's right. Yeah, almost 10 years. Damn. But we don't get to see the pencil disappear in The Dark Knight. Nolan yeah. comped out on that one. Yeah, that's he true. He wanted that PG-13 rating, that bastard. <laughs> No, this is definitely a hard R. And so, wait. One of my favorite fight scenes in the movie was also Mm -hmm. maybe the funniest scene in the movie, and it's when (laughs) John Wick and, what's his name, uh, Chronic? Common. 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 Yeah. (laughs) They're, uh, they're like, (laughs) underground in a subway. (laughs) And, uh... Silence Common. pistol battle. <laughs> yeah, Common's like up on a higher level, and they're like very um, uh, oh, inconspicuously <laughs> shooting at each other while yeah. walking uh, through pedestrians. It's very funny. Yeah, a crowded airport. They're on two different levels, and they're shooting at one another and like avoiding each other through columns. Like that is the kind of ridiculous action that I love in movies, and like makes movies worth seeing. So mm-hmm. like when I when that happened, I was just like, "Fuck yes, <laughs> this fucking movie, yes." It's the most casual shootout I've ever seen on film. Yeah, yeah, and like, and then they get on the subway car, and then they kind of have to sidle up to each other in kind of the middle of a full subway car. So here's when oh, when when it gets to the subway. This is when I start some cracks in the movie start to form, mm-hmm. and I want to talk about mm-hmm. these, and I want to present these to you and i want to see if you have an explanation or if you agree no yeah th- okay. that's pretty fucking dumb so the whole the underground organization with all the assassins mm-hmm. that that every everybody loves the the lore behind these movies mostly yes. with this criminal organization with the continental hotel like and everything yeah it's way too fucking big I swear, there's like a billion people in this yeah. secret underground organization. Because anywhere he goes in the world, there's like a whole ho- hotel for, full of these assassins, and you can go buy guns and all this shit. And it's yeah. just fucking everywhere. And when when the hit goes out on John Wick, that's the plot of the movie is that there's a hit, and all the assassins in the organization now want to kill him. Mm. Within a three block radius in New York City, he gets attacked by like ten different people. Yeah, is every no. fucking person in New York a hitman? Here's the thing, and, that's something that was in the first movie, that, like, you just saw all these assassin yeah. people kind of in their own world, and you have to wonder kind of, like, where it, are they in New York that, like, this entirely happens. This movie leans into that. This movie says, basically, if John Wick is around somewhere, everyone in that five-mile radius is an assassin. And, like, I kind of love that, just for just for an action movie type thing. Like, I saw somebody on online say... They would have loved it if a toddler or baby had pulled out a cell phone <laughs> <laughs> near the end of the movie and it would have said John Wick, $7 million. <laughs> but here's where I, um, the subway scenes got me thinking about this idea because I was kind of yeah. annoyed by how everybody in this movie is an assassin. And I was thinking, well, are there any normal people in this fictional no. version of Earth? No, there's not. But then on the subway, <laughs> he, John Wick's face is covered 
in yeah. blood. Yeah. And nobody gives him a second look. Every like, I don't know if that's just because New Yorkers are rude and they don't care. But my hypothesis is that in this universe, assassins and deadly shootings happening on the street are just a, a common occurrence. And everybody Daily. knows that there's these assassins. So yeah. it's no big deal when they see it. And then when they see the two um, assassins fighting on the subway, they just wait patiently for the doors to open and then they run out. They don't yeah, try yeah. to interfere or call the police or anything. They're just like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just leave them to their own business and uh, do not interfere. Because well, John Wick kills 200 people in this movie and it doesn't lead to some sort of international incident. So I think in this universe of John Wick, this is just a common occurrence and everybody knows there's this underground <laughs> league of assassins that kill each yeah. other all the time. No big deal. See, this is something that, like, as long as the movie uh, keeps getting more ridiculous and keeps scaling it up <laughs> more and more, I just love it more and more. Like, if it, if, it, <laughs> if it kind of stayed as small scale as the first one, but then they had those assassins uh, going after the John Wick contract in the same fucking airport all going after him, like, I would think that that would be wrong. But what this movie does is basically ramps it up so that w they can eventually introduce kind of this idea for the the inevitable sequel hopefully and it's also implied that every single homeless person in new yes. york is also a secret assassin yeah what it's in not the just fuck? the normals it's also the homeless it, it's bizarre but i, I mean <laughs> I, I agree for this for this high a movie like this where the action is so highlighted and pronounced mm -hmm. I just have to accept it because there wouldn't be a movie without it and i love yeah. what the movie is so i guess i'll try to stop thinking about it i guess it is a popcorn movie huh Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, like, when, when the woman with the violin pulls a gun out of her violin and then goes <laughs> after Keanu Reeves, yeah. like, you gotta either say, oh, this is fucking awesome, or you just say, well, this is dumb. I think you can do both. <laughs> it's awesome and dumb. It's dumbness is what makes it awesome. And no, I'm exactly, very much yeah. looking forward to the next one. Definitely, definitely. Should we go into like, spoilers then, or do you have anything yeah, else to yeah. say? Yeah, let's talk about just generally, like, what kind of pushes John Wick into this, and then going forward what what we can expect to see from a future right. john wick movie okay yeah we're in the spoilers now so uh yeah so in this movie john wick is being called into uh back into the game by a guy who got him out in the first place uh by using this what is it the mark or something yeah yeah and so basically he has to do this guy's bidding and i i think at first i was like this guy's just a douchebag like in the first movie, I really fucking hated the guy uh, who killed his dog, and he's like, so he's Theon Greyjoy in the Game of Thrones show, so he's already eminently mm. hateable. But yeah, I think they did a better job of really building this guy up more. So when he does betray John Wick, you're just like, oh, fuck this guy. Like, you, you really want to see John Wick uh, get him. And then so the end of the movie is in this, like, hall of mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> which is insane like, yeah i i guess inside the what's the name of the museum the museum of natural history there mm -hmm. is a giant funhouse beer maze exhibit yes for, for some reason i think i think this is just because of the assassin world they live in uh you don't think it's actually has, there oh i i think it is i think it is but i i that that's my that's my uh trying to put reason to it is that Every city has these crazy things just so assassins can, can fight kill inside each them. other in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he goes into this crazy mirror thing. And, like, here's the thing. Like, anybody who makes a movie, like, mirrors are their worst enemy. Because yeah. anything that is your boom mic, anything that is the cameraman, anything that is wires on somebody who's doing a stunt or something, like mirrors make that incredibly easy to see and this is a movie that pushes keanu reeves and several like stunt people into entirely mirrored environments <laughs> so, for like, like five whole minutes yeah and that is fucking cool they make really good use of it and it never feels like hokey in the way that in any other movie when a bad guy would lure a good guy into a hall of mirrors it the just same feels thing like, happened oh, in yeah. um lego batman yeah, there's absolutely. the same exact scene in that movie. I thought it was funny that back to back <laughs> movies. I saw a Hall of Mirrors fucking yeah. scene. Yeah, absolutely. But do, do you think that? I mean, surely it was just CGI. Um, they CGI'd out the cameraman and stuff. They, they couldn't have done that practically, right? Yeah, no. I mean, I, I think they they probably have a decent amount of tricks, and y you could probably use the mirrors to your advantage in some way. Uh, 
Well, even Birdman had to use CGI to get the the mirror shot to work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's very probable that they used CGI and stuff to take take those people out. But it, I think it's still just generally a ballsy thing because it's it's so easy to fuck miss it up. Something, yeah, fuck yeah. it up somehow. Yeah. So wait, is there any other super cool action moments in this movie? I like the scene where he's in the tunnel uh, fighting the people because he's just running out of bullets and running out of guns all the time. Mm-hmm. Oh, but what I did really like was in the last scene, the last kind of fight scene, uh, he's gotten Lawrence Fishburne to give him a gun, a gun that only has seven bullets, which he pays a million dollars a bullet for. But uh, <laughs> so he's only got that one gun, so he uses that one gun. And then throughout that entire last action sequence, he's having to take guns from other people. That's just such a cool thing it's like a video game yeah exactly it reminded me of playing a video game where you're just like this gun does not have enough bullets i gotta take it from somebody else Mm. like that's what i love about this movie is every action scene feels different is different and they they kind of do some core part of it differently than anything else so it starts with a uh car and uh hand-to-hand combat uh fight the middle fight is kind of a Full on gun battle. Oh, we forgot to mention the uh, he's he goes to Rome or yeah Rome, which is in Italy. Uh, he goes to Rome to do all this stuff, but what when he goes to Rome, he does not uh rely on his old armory. He has to get new guns and new weapons. And there's a nice scene where he goes to the person who outfits him with guns, who's uh, Peter F- Sarah Fenwick, uh, who's a British comedian. Uh, type guy and he is basically treating these weapon pairings like wine pairings and stuff like so <laughs> yeah, yeah john wick says like something bold and then he gives him like a shotgun or something <laughs> yeah i wasn't sure if they were supposed to be talking in code like i, I don't know I, for some reason it felt like that was a conversation they would have in public so that people uh-huh. overhearing wouldn't know what they were talking about but they were the only two in the room so it was it's, especially it's... silly yeah, yeah, no, it's it's their spy language. I bet. I think yeah, they just it's just get can't off be on... fun. Okay, I just wanted to talk about one more kill I really liked before we yeah, talk about sure. the ending. And mm-hmm. speaking of him always running out of ammo, it's when he's down in the tunnel and he's using a shotgun to kill everybody. Yeah, and yeah. There's well, there's one guy left, and he 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 tries to shoot him, and he's all out of fucking ammo. So yeah. he pins the guy down with the with the um, barrel of the shotgun, reloads, and then blasts his chest open. Yeah, absolutely. It's perfect. So great. Yeah, so he's got all of his weapons in that scene, and then uh, he has to he's forced to take other people's weapons in the last action sequence. Or I guess, I don't know, that middle kind of scene where he's walking through the airport and the subway and stuff, like that, I think that's one of my favorite action scenes in the movie, just because, I don't know, it's so, it's so crazy. So let's talk about the ending insofar as... The ending as... is my favorite part. It got me absolutely yeah. pumped. It was yeah. just perfect. So this guy who John Wick is trying to kill for betraying him has taken up at the Continental Hotel, and people who've seen the first John Wick understand what this means. Basically, this is a assassin safe haven where uh, you are protected by the hotel and protected by this kind of uh, international assassin community. So it's kind of it's kind of a neutral territory. Nobody can fire upon someone else or attack someone else. But I mean, like in the first movie. The girl, uh, Adrian Pilecki, uh, attacked John Wick in that movie. And I don't think that, I don't think she died. I don't remember. Okay. But I don't remember anything happening particularly bad to her. But okay, so you're not supposed to shoot anybody or fight anybody in this place. And, and that's really articulated cool in this scene, movie. Yeah. Uh, are you going to talk about the scene with Common? Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah, Common yeah, and That's John my other Wick, favorite scene crash through a window into the hotel <laughs> and so the roman version of uh oh god ian mcshane has to tell them <laughs> not to fight yeah they, they were fighting to the death for about four minutes and then they fall into the oh, hotel and then they go at the bar the and stairs. have a drink together yeah yeah they fall down <laughs> the stairs for like a minute <laughs> yeah they fall down three flights of stairs <laughs> and they they place the camera so that you never think that it's the bottom until you know, oh shit, they've got another fucking flight of stairs to fall down. 
Yeah, that was so great. But okay, so John Wick and Common are sharing a drink. And what I really love about this movie is it kind of like layers these kinds of things in. So I quoted uh, Morpheus Lawrence Fishburne at the beginning of this mm-hmm. review. And so his deal is that he's some kind of like spy network guy. But the way he... He's like the king at, of the homeless people. Yeah, yeah. He's the king of just these informant people. But the way he's at where he's at is that John Wick spared his life at some point and kind of allowed him to live and he's kind of gone on to uh run this network and stuff he does the same thing to common in this movie where he stabs him in the aorta oh, or something and if you were to remove that knife you die so you just have to keep it there and you're kind of you're kind of out of action but i'm wondering if common will be his like ally in the next movie or something well, he needs some sort of ally because once we go into the ending. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, yeah, I, I set up this hotel. So in the hotel, you can't kill anyone. Uh, no one can kill you. You're in the sacred ground. And John Wick breaks the rules to kill this fucking asshole who brought him back into the fold. And and burned down his fucking house. Burned down his fucking house, man. And so that was my kind of question is how do you uh, realistically – show that John Wick is still in this after he shouldn't be, after he's got another dog and he's taken out this crime boss and everything. I think they do a pretty good job of it. Uh, They burn down his house and uh, get him back in by saying, you owe me for getting you out in the first place. Yeah, so he executes this guy. And then uh, he has to have a meeting with Ian McShane at the end of the movie where he basically says you are excommunicated. And I thought that Ian McShane was going to try to kill him. Like the the old <laughs> the old guy was going to hold a pistol up to him and try to execute him. But basically they give him an hour's an hour's Yeah, they uh, pretty much say every ahead. single assassin in the world is now going to try to kill you, but you get a one hour head start. Go. Yes, yes. And so you've got this long sequence of all of these people. Uh, in New York, answering their phones and saying that there's a seven million, or is it seven million, or is that the one it, that it's what, fourteen the, the million dude, now? It's fourteen million now. Yeah, yeah they so, doubled it. So everyone now has John Wick's head uh, in their in their sights. So and it's playing this really fucking torqued up song, and he's running with his dog through yeah. like Central Park, New York, and we don't know what the hell he's gonna do because in an hour he's he's dead. He hasn't. No weapons on him. They cut him off. He's excommunicated, so he can't go get those resources anymore. Yeah, he has yeah. nothing. The coins he's like kind of really relied on to like get him through this assassin world is now useless to him. He has like, absolutely nothing. And then as he's running, bam, it's over. Yeah. And I'm thinking, holy shit, that's probably my favorite cliffhanger. What I'm a not great talking way. I'm not talking like some sort of uh, fucking ambiguous ending like Inception. I mean like a cliffhanger yeah. where there's going to be another one and I want to see what the hell happens. Mm-hmm. Eat your ha- a- heart out, desolation of smog, your shitty <laughs> cliffhanger what bullshit. A sh- what a shitty fucking ending. Okay, but what a <laughs> yeah, no great shit. way to build up this world, build up John Wick within this world, build up John Wick's proficiency in this world, and then as the cliffhanger, remove him from that world and say now... This world isn't working against him. How does he survive against that? Like, he basically God, perfectly damn. built up the stakes so that anyone who likes likes this movie in any way is just salivating for another one. Because, yeah. like, basically it'll be the middle of this movie on steroids, just pumped the to whole the time. Line. And, like, you can do so much with this. You can go all around the world because he's on the run. Like... Oh my god, like, I, I just can barely even think about what they've got planned next. And nowhere he goes, he'll be safe because there are assassins everywhere. Yes. Uh, and he's so famous that movie, they all know who he is. <laughs> this movie proves that. <laughs> Alright, should we go into recommendations then? Absolutely. Right, I'll, I'll let you take the reins because I already know what you're going to say. Sounds good. Okay, so John Wick Chapter 2 is basically the perfect sequel by any it's the stretch raid of the two imagination. To John Wick's raid. Yes. So basically, if you're going to make a sequel, what you have to do is remind us why we liked the first one, uh, compellingly forward the characters in some way so that they're not just replaying all the old stuff that they did. You deepen the lore, you deepen the mystery, you kind of give us a reason to keep watching these things and then give us a 
badass cliffhanger at the very end that you want to see more of these and you'll be very happy to see more. Holy of these. shit, this pretty much is Empire Strikes Back. Huh? Yeah, I was thinking like that. Like in every yeah. way. Yeah, absolutely. Like Empire Strikes Back to me is like the best sequel. Or and even, even the Raid 2 has that big cliffhanger at the end. Yep, yep. And shit. so when a movie like John Wick comes around, like it's kind of got its own kind of original spirit that you, you're not expecting a whole lot going in, but then it kind of redefines how you see action movies from then on. John Wick Chapter 2 lives up to all of that promise and shows you how much can be done. And even just playing within the world that it's made from the last movie, they are now spinning that world even further out and kind of trying to show us what else they can do. So John Wick Chapter 2 is just... One of the best movies of the year, probably. I'm just going to call it. It's it's February, but it'll probably be <laughs> yeah. one of the best of the year. It's absolutely worth seeing in theaters. It's absolutely worth going out with friends. You will have a great time watching this movie, uh, regardless of how old you are. I, I, I bet. If you have a single uh, violent bone in your body or, or wish to see violence on screen, this movie is for you. Now, if somebody hasn't seen the first one, would you say you have to watch that first, or can you just go into this one? I mean, you probably hmm, you probably could go into this one, but I wouldn't recommend it. Like if I if I had to tell somebody to watch John Wick first, I t- I say I tell them to watch John Wick first. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you. If you like action movies at all, and you need to go see this one. This is probably the best one we're gonna get for a little while. Yeah, I can't think of anything else that looks promising coming out until maybe summer. All righty, I have. One Twitter question that we could discuss to wrap up the episode. Okay. This one is from Mr. Bruce Snoop. He says, have there been any movies you didn't expect to be good, but you saw and you were blown away, which is very appropriate to ask when we're discussing John Wick. Yeah, right. Because going into the first John Wick, I had no expectations. I didn't give a shit. And it was great. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm trying to think of some good answers here. Yeah, John Wick certainly uh, takes the cake here. Uh, it, it's hard for me because I'm, I, I follow movies very closely. So if I hear people say the movie's good, I'm generally going to trust them and say, all right, uh, you probably have a decent idea of what good movies are. It's sometimes I disagree with them, but for the most part. So a movie like, to me, The Witch, which has no kind of prior really experience. It's a first-time director, first-time writer. A lot of the stars of the movie are kind of first-time actors. Uh, the the parents of that movie are uh, are well-known actors, but otherwise everybody's kind of new talent. So The Witch definitely, I'd say, uh, was a movie that took me by surprise. Uh, I'm trying to think of recent recent examples, and so I, I I've already seen I had already seen uh, Jeremy Saulnier's uh, previous movie uh, Blue Ruin. And Green Room, so I, I knew what to expect from that director, but Green Room just blew me away. Uh, mm. Just from a pure tension level uh, for me. Green so Room was of one of my head, favorite movies of that year, too. Yeah, and like, so I knew it was going to be intense, but I, I just, I could not, I could not prepare myself for how intense that movie was. My heart rate was going, like, so fucking fast when I watched that movie. And I, I, I'm so used to high tension type movies that movie just shattered any any thoughts I had before then. I have a controversial pick that you'll probably make fun of me for, okay. but uh, I remember one weekend, me and Biggs, a couple of years ago, we wanted to go see a movie, and we looked to see what was playing, and mm-hmm. it was pretty much all shit. And I, <laughs> I was looking at the Rotten Tomato score for a little-known movie called The Lone Ranger, Oh, good lord. And boy, howdy. Oh, no. Did that have some shitty reviews? So we were like, okay, <laughs> let's go see this. This will be fun to make fun of. What is? Yeah. It looks like a shit yeah. fest. I love that movie. It's great. Oh, nice. Okay. And I, hmm. I'm not the only one who loves it because a little known indie director you might know, Quentin Tarantino, put that movie <laughs> oh, yeah, he in. Did, he did put that He put on it his in list. his top ten of the year. So fuck That's all true. you. I was right. That's that true. movie is fucking fun and cool, and I loved it, mm-hmm. even though I don't know shit about the character. Okay, okay. Oh, I, I have a better answer. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to intrude here. Tangerine. 
It's a movie that's now on Netflix. I saw it in a little uh, little art house type thing. Is that theater. the one that was made all on iPhones? Yes, it's made entirely on iPhones. Uh, people walked out of the movie uh, when we saw it <laughs> in the theater. That's certainly a sign of greatness in my book. But yeah, just just a great little unexpected movie. Uh, surprisingly deep characters for a movie that's like shot on iPhone and just generally you don't think much of that. But it just really shows you what the art form can contain. So yeah, Tangerine, it's on Netflix now. So uh, if you haven't seen it and you're fine with watching uh, uh, a bunch of trans people yelling at each other for an hour and a half, yeah, that's definitely worth watching. So my pick for an underrated movie is a film that got a 30% Rotten Tomatoes, and E. Rich's pick is an Oscar-nominated film. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. We did it. <laughs> we fucking did it. Okay, so, Monk, be honest. Would okay. you really recommend that I watch uh, The Lone Ranger? Oh, you haven't seen it? I have not seen it. It's worth it for the, the ending train action sequence alone. Uh-huh. It's it's amazing. It's, can I, can it's, just... it's super fun. Can I just share something with you about that movie real quick? Yeah, sure. Just random things that I know about this. So apparently there was an early version of The Lone Ranger that had a werewolf sub- subplot in it or something. Huh. So it would have ended with Johnny. And, and supposedly there's some like pieces of that in the Native American parts of the movie that like never really get uh, picked up on. But you can you can vaguely tell if you kind of know that going into it. But so Johnny Depp was going to fight werewolves uh, at the end of that movie. <laughs> I well, I'm glad they cut it out because <laughs> that movie is already like two hours and forty minutes long. Good lord! So That's it's Gore a good Verbinski, thing they cut something right? out. What's that? Gore Verbinski directed that one, right? Uh, he he did the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Oh, yeah, maybe because he he also did a Cure for Wellness, and now I don't want to see that anymore. I've oh, heard it's yeah, just a it's, huge it's pile of a, shit. It's got a terrible RT score, which is such a shame. It's doing worse than The Great Wall. Good lord. That Donald Trump biopic, The Great Wall. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we'll have to go see it just so that we can be critical of a movie because so far we've only said good things about every th- single movie we've seen. Yeah, even even movies where we've had some nitpicks to talk about, uh, we've been pretty pretty overwhelmingly, oh, this was a great movie. Yeah, we Otherwise. need to go see some shit. Yeah, we gotta I know really in my luck, I'm gonna it. go see Cure for Wellness and I'm gonna love it. <laughs> so... I think it's possible. Like I think it's possible that I don't know. Critics don't like certain things, and if they see that in a movie, they're not going to go for it. I think it's possible. All right. Anything else we should uh, discuss before we wrap up this episode? This might be the new longest one. Oh yeah, we're constantly we setting keep records going here. longer and longer on these things, dude. Yeah, I mean, all I'll say is see John Wick Chapter Two. <laughs> really support yeah, it. Give this movie your money. Don't give it to Fifty Shades Darker. Yeah, fuck that movie. Jesus. Alrighty, for the Mumkey and Cobb movie podcast episode 8, I've been Mumkey. And I have been Erich. <laughs>